Hey guys, Liz from The Nail Hub here. And today I am going to talk about how to work with thin gels. A lot of you guys have been asking me this question um, and there is a big difference between the different viscosities of gel that are available out there on the market. This is one of my favorite thinner gels. This is Accents Enhance. Um, and there's also uh, Trinity, which is very similar. It's slightly thinner. Um, but Enhance is probably one of my all-time favorites. It's just got this like really nice silky texture to it. Um, you'll notice it looks blue on the camera. That's because this particular gel formulation has a little bit of violet color added to it to make it really crystal clear on the nail. Some gels require that um, because of the photo initiators that are used. Um, so depending on the formula, if the formula tends to get a teeny bit yellow while curing, Sometimes brands will put a little bit of blue or violet color in their clear gel to make sure that it stays crystal clear after curing. So that's why it looks blue, but it's actually not blue at all. When you put it on the nail, it looks crystal clear. Um, so you'll see how quickly this gel self levels. And actually my studio is pretty cold right now. So if I was in the middle of summer, this gel would be running even more than it already is. So I wanted to share some tips about working with thin gels like this. And, um, and give you some ideas as to how you can work with product that self-levels really easily. I love working with gels that self-level because it makes your life so much easier when it comes to filing, but I know that they're not for everyone. And so I wanted to just give you some ideas as to how you can work with them and make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so I have a, um, a just a plastic nail tip here that I have prepared with a little bit of matte top coat on it just so that it's got a nice smooth texture. Obviously, if you, were, um, if you were doing this on a real nail, you would want to do your full nail prep, right? So you would want to do your, um, your, your removal of all the surface oils. You would want to remove the natural shine with a, um, a nail file or an e-file or whatever you're using to prep your nails. And so really we would have this kind of chalky, dry, slightly textured nail surface, but for the sake of just doing a video really quick, all I did was took a plastic tip, put some matte top coat on it just so that it's got more of like a, not smooth, but more of a, a gritty texture to it, like it's going to attach rather than slipping on slippery plastic, okay? So that's an easy way if you're just practicing and you want to just skip right ahead rather than having to buff the tips, just put some matte top coat on your nail tips and it works great for, um, for application. All right, the other thing I'm going to use is I'm gonna use a gel brush. Now, the gel brush does play a big role in the success of your application. And I'm gonna show you a couple different options here. So the black one on the right, um, or on the top I should say, is a synthetic bristle brush. Um, synthetic bristles are really nice because it's easy to get gel off of them um, since it's smooth plastic and you're, you know, the gel that you're putting on um, is gonna be easier to remove off of those types of bristles. Um, they uh, feel a little bit different than natural hair, but they work just as well. And the one on the bottom is a natural hair brush. Um, so this is a Kalinsky sable brush. Some people also feel, you know, have very, very strong feelings about using sable. Um, it's up to you what you decide. So there are both synthetic and natural hair brushes, and you can see they look very similar. These are both what I would consider like a cat tongue brush, or you could even maybe say that the black one is more like a round or an oval. Um, but you'll notice that they look kind of like a spatula, right? They're, we're not using brushes like makeup brushes where they're fluffy or we're using the, you know, we're not absorbing product into the brush to be able to apply it. What we really want to use is we want to have a brush that acts as if it were a spatula. And actually you can even apply gel with a spatula if you really wanna try that. Um, applying gel with a spatula also works because really all we need is an applicator and we need something that kind of allows us to make contact with the gel and maneuver it around on the nail. So um, I really like this size. This is like a number six size. Uh, gel brushes usually are like a four, six, or eight. I think six is a really, really great size. I'll show you a four really quick so you can get an idea of what, a, oops, as I drop everything. I'll put a four in the middle so you all can see. So can you see how the, the four is just a little bit smaller width wise? 
And I find that the smaller the brush you use for gel application, the more difficult it is. Um, that's just my personal preference. I mean, obviously if you're doing nail art or you're trying to get into really tight nooks and crannies with color, yeah, a number four would be great for that. But for applying builder gels, I usually use a number six because it's just a great all around size. Um, the other thing I would recommend is use, um, use one brush for clear gels. And you'll notice that my bristles are perfectly together. They're not frayed or sticking out. That's because I normally leave a little bit of clear gel on the tip of my brush and I keep them capped that way. So you can see a little bit of a shimmer here and that's because it has residual product on it. Now, before I start applying my product, what I like to do is you can do this with a little bit of clear gel or even I'm just gonna, it's been a while since I've used this brush. So I'm gonna clean it just a little bit for you. So if you notice, like when I press down, I've shown this before in other videos, when I press down, my brush doesn't really spring back for me. It's kind of like frozen. That's also just because it's been sitting for a while and it's cold in here and I have a teeny bit of product on it, which I like because it keeps my bristles together. But I need this to spring up a little bit more and I need it to maneuver a little bit more. Now you'll notice I'm not kind of scrubbing my brush back and forth to clean it. You really wanna just do one direction because you want these bristles to stay together and you wanna train the hair, um, whether it's synthet synthetic or real, to stay together and to maintain its shape. And you don't wanna get any like frayed bits or anything like that sticking out. So just be very gentle with your brushes. The other thing I'm gonna do now that I've just made sure that I wipe that a little bit with some alcohol is on my mat here or on you know like a nail form paper or um, any type of like tile plastic surface anything that's smooth I'm just gonna put a little bit of gel in my brush and just kind of work it through and you'll see it kind of like pushes from one side to the other okay and now you'll see that my brush is actually kind of springing back for me right it's we're not gonna be putting that much pressure on the nail but I like my brush to move with me so I always check that that's the case before I start working okay so now I feel like that is good to go. I'll just clean that off really quick so I don't get my hand in it. All right, so like I said, I've got this matte nail tip here. Let me make sure that's in focus for you. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a wetting layer on the nail. This is, the, this is probably one of the number one tricks to getting gel to do what you want it to do is to put a wetting layer. You'll also hear me refer to it as a slip layer. Um, depending on you know what school you go to or what brand you use, you'll probably hear one of those two terms um, or there might be another term you come across. But basically the idea is we want to put gel on this nail in a controlled way so that when we put more gel on the nail, it stays right in that area that we've got wet on wet, okay? So I'm going to pick up and I'll show you because I know you guys get frustrated when I don't do things on camera. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of gel, just like that, okay? Now you can go in the middle, you can go, some people only like picking up from the edges, totally depends on you, but I just need a little bit of gel and I try and usually keep it on one side of my brush that way if I'm getting up close to the skin, I don't get all over the place. So you don't wanna be like dipping in and you don't want gel all the way up onto the crimp of your brush. You just want it to be on the bristles only, okay? So you can even take off a little bit if you feel like you've got too much. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this gel all over the surface of the nail. Now this doesn't matter what length you're doing, it doesn't matter if you're doing forms or not, this is exactly what I would do no matter what. You want this wet layer of gel carefully applied. Pretend like you're painting on um, red nail polish, right? Like we don't want to touch the skin with it at all. We want to get it very perfect and on the nail like so. Doesn't matter if you can see a little bit of, you know, you'll notice with, with um, thin gels, they will self-level really quickly to the point where they're glossy again. Just make sure that it's all perfectly shiny and right at the cuticle area, you'll see like one dry line where I've stayed away from the cuticle area because if I have wet gel touching the skin, and I go and I put my dollop of gel on top of this, that gel is gonna wanna flow right into that area. So be very careful about your wetting layer and how precise you are about applying it. All right, so now that I've got this wet layer, I'm not going to cure it. I'm going to leave this as my guide area and I'm going to pick up a large amount of gel. 
Now, this is going to apply whether you're working with thin or thick gels, and I'm gonna do another video only showing you how to work with really thick builder gels. But with thin gels, we still wanna pick up a substantial amount of product. So I'm gonna dip in, and then I like to just go up and down and break that string that's attached. So I, I end up with gel just on one side of my brush like that. Can you see how I have like a nice big dollop? You can even pick up more, but I'm just gonna show you how to work with this real quick. Okay, so I've got my wet layer here. And all I'm gonna do is just push and make contact with the gel that's underneath, okay? And I could even like literally scrape it off and just let it sit there for a second. And this is a really good exercise to practice, which is just let the gel sit there for a second and watch it work. The whole idea behind gel and the fact that it's thin and it's self-leveling is that it's going to end up smoothing itself out for you. So even though it's not in the right place, you can see how smooth of a nail I already have on the surface. And this is why a lot of gel professionals like working with thinner gels, because it ends up doing all the work for you. Now, I've got this dollop on here. And like I said, don't freak out. Don't start touching it a million times. Just for the sake of experimenting with your products, like look how nice this is already, okay? Just let it sit there for a second. And if you want to and you want to do it again, you can scrape it right off. And I'm just going to put this back in the jar. Okay, so this is the only time you'll ever see me put a ton of pressure on my brushes when I'm squeegeeing off gel. So I use my brush like a little squeegee. This is a great way to practice with your product before you actually try to do a full set. Okay, so again, pick up, while it's still wet, I'm gonna pick up a nice dollop of gel. I've got that on one side of my brush. Just touch down, okay? I'm not putting very much pressure. I'm literally just touching like the surface of the gel right there. So I'm not pressing into it. I'm just making contact and then see how the gel just stays con with, you know, stays in touch with my brush. So all I'm gonna do is use very light pressure and maintaining that contact with my brush. And I'm just gonna guide the gel down the nail. And we wanna keep most of it in that apex area anyway. So just using these kind of I call them like half moon or semicircle motions. I'm just swooping back and forth and just let that sit. I've got a couple areas here I can see that like right here that's not quite self-leveled, but just let it sit for a second, okay? See right there on the edges? And don't freak about stuff like that because we really want most of the product to be right in that apex area anyway. Now, if you feel like you have a little bit too much on, on the free edge, you can you know maneuver that down just a little bit more, but let the gel do its thing. Don't start pushing and prodding and poking and moving and all of that stuff. And once you feel like it's pretty dang good, which I think this is, go ahead and cure it. Now, let me do that one more time with a different finger and I'll show you also something else that helps. So again, wetting layer, okay? And I like to do, when I do my wetting layer, whether it's like the first layer I'm doing like base coat or something, or if I'm doing builder gel straight on the nail, depending on the formulation of the gel that I'm using. Some gels you need to use a base coat. Um, so I would do this with the base coat, but some nails you, um, you want to use, uh, or sorry, some products you need to use like a primer or some type of like liquid bonder. So it just depends on what you're doing. If you're doing base coat under your builder gel, you would apply your base coat with whether it's bottled or it's potted, whatever. Let's pretend this is base coat. I would really work this into the nail plate, okay? So make sure it's like really in there. All those nooks and crannies that I created by removing the natural shine with my nail file, I really wanna work that into the nail plate. You're gonna see quite a bit of texture. I would cure the base coat, okay? And I can even do that for you if you wanna see what that looks like. So let's pretend that's my base coat layer. Okay, so this would be my cured base coat layer if I did it that way with base coat underneath. Again, it depends on the gel you're using. Some you're gonna use more of a liquid um, air drying bonder or primer. Some you're gonna use a gel base coat. It just depends on the system and what the formulation is. But in either case, that bonder, primer, or base coat is the thing, it's the product that's going to create that adhesion between your builder gel and the natural nail. Okay, so that's why those products are used. So it depends on you know how the gel, the builder gel was formulated, but some of them are gonna need that cured base coat underneath. Some of them are just gonna need a primer underneath, or some of them are gonna use a bonder underneath. 
Um, and there's lots of varying uh, products out there like that, all right? Um, so let's pretend this is my cured gel base coat that I put on the natural nail. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do a wet layer with my builder gel. So again, very carefully applying it only in the areas that I want the gel to be. Okay, nice smooth layer like that. You can cap the free edge a little bit if you want to, but in this case, I don't think that's gonna be an issue because we've already put the gel base coat on the natural nail. I'm gonna pick up my nice big dollop. Okay, so a nice big dollop of gel. And I'm just gonna touch, barely put pressure on the product. I'm gonna touch it onto the nail surface and just with a teeny little bit of guidance, and you can tip the finger as you go down, I'm just gonna work this gel down the nail, okay? And just let it do its thing. The nice thing also about thin gel is it will kind of, it has memory almost where it goes back on itself. So even if you have little strings or anything, you can kind of zhuzh it around. And we're still gonna file usually anyway, I mean, it's pretty impossible to get the nail perfect to the point where you never have to file. You're usually always gonna have to file something. But I just wanted to show you that if you just put the gel on the nail, nine times out of 10, it ends up self-leveling beautifully and you really don't have to do very much. Now, let's say I wanna adjust where all of this is. I'm gonna turn the finger upside down, which I know is hard to see on camera, but just turn it upside down. And what we're using is, if I were to show you from the side, we're using gravity to help pull the gel down towards the nail, right? So if I show you like this one from the side, okay? We're basically gonna point this apex area down towards the ground, and I can even use my brush to kind of pull it into the right area. But you can see even just with that upside down, see how the gel just pulled all the way right there in that, that apex right there? And if I tilt the finger up a little bit as I'm doing that, this gel will run a little bit closer back to the cuticle. So while I'm doing this, I wanna make sure that the gel stays kind of in the center. I'll show you now. See how I just tipped that up? And if you give it a second, just like this, just vertical, and with the, the nail surface facing upwards like it's supposed to, it will relax back down again. So see how that relaxes down? So just, I encourage you to toy around with this, with tipping the finger this way and that way, just to get an idea, not that you're gonna do this for an hour on a client or on yourself, but it does give you an idea of how the gel moves and how no gel is touching the skin. Have you guys seen how like none of this is running into the cuticle, none of it's running into the sidewalls? I have complete control over it because I'm able to just turn the finger upside down and I'm able to just get that gel to go where I want it to go. And, um, and even just practicing, you know, just barely making contact with the gel with little strings, you know, kind of pulling it, pushing it, and let it self-level and you'll have a beautifully smooth surface. So I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and cure this and then I'll show you guys after what it looks like. Okay, so this is the first one that I did. And if we look at it from the side, I'll put my hand behind it so you guys can see that a little bit better. That is literally with no messing around. I didn't do anything to the surface other than just put the gel on the nail and let it sit for a second. You can see how smooth the reflection is. I've got one tiny divot right there where there's like a little bend in the line of the light right there. Can you guys see that? So I've got, as I, as I go like here, you can see these kind of shapes. And when it's perfectly smooth, I should have a perfect oval. Like see right there is perfectly smooth. Perfect oval all the way up and down. And this line right here, this white line and this, you know, more sheer white line, they're, the, they're perfectly symmetrical all the way from top to bottom. That lets you know that it's perfectly smooth on the surface. If I go over here, you'll see it kind of gets wonky, almost like a, you know, like a state fair, one of those trick mirrors, you know, that make you look funny. Um, that's exactly what you wanna look for, is does it look perfectly symmetrical? See, and even there over there is like perfectly smooth. So even just with putting a dollop on the nail and just letting it sit there and let it do its thing, which is the self-leveling that thin gels are supposed to do, this nail is literally probably 95 or percent better, um, you know, as far as being perfect. And I really wouldn't need to do very much to that nail, especially if this is an overlay. Um, I wouldn't need to add any more product. If you do want to add more product, you can go ahead, do a wet layer again, 
add another bead of product and continue to work that. But I wanted to show the advantages of working with the thinner gel because it does 95% of the work for you. Okay, so let me show you the other one that we just did where I did mess around with it a little bit. So again, checking the reflection. I'll zoom in a little bit for you so you can see that better. So checking the reflection looks pretty dang smooth to me. Even over here on the edges, you can see right there. And I've got two tips on this nail if you're wondering why there's clear underneath this. It's just because it helps hold it a little bit better when I can't put my fingers on it. Um, there's a little bit here that would get filed away, like there's a little spot right there. But I mean, honestly, this nail, if I put my hand underneath so you can see, I mean, look how perfect that shape is. It's thin at the free edge. It's got the concentration of product at the apex. It's perfectly smooth all the way from sidewall to sidewall. I mean, that's exactly what you want when you're working with gel and all the way on the tip is smooth, okay? So that's why I really want to encourage you guys to toy around with your thin gels. You don't have to cure it every time. Instead of wasting your product, go ahead and scrape it off, put it back in the jar, but really play with allowing your gel to do its thing because I feel like we get so anxious about working with product that we start immediately pushing on it and poking it. And with thinner gels, even though they seem intimidating because they move around quite a bit, it's actually one of the biggest advantages of working with thinner gels because look how perfect this nail is and I didn't even file it yet. I mean, that is literally picture perfect. Now, yes, I have done this a million bazillion times, um, but that's part of the whole thing of mastering your products is practicing. And like they say, an expert has 10,000 hours of experience with what they do, um, at least, you know, to be an expert level person. Um, you know, think about that when you're toying around with gels. It takes practice to get good at it. But once you master your product, look how much work that product did for me. And that is also half the battle when you're talking about shaving off time off of appointments. Or even if you're doing your own nails and it takes you four hours to do your own set of nails, that's how you get to the point where you're shaving off time and that's how you get to the point where you're able to do a full set of nails on someone in an hour or less is that you use the product to your advantage, okay? So I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about thinner gels and how to work with them. And next time I will show you guys how to work with super thick gels. All right, bye. Oh,